guys. Welcome to Jimmy Comics. My name is Riley. This is my fiance, Caitlin. We're here at the Jimmy Cave, and we're joined by Tanner at his domain. <laughs> what is your superhero cave name? The Curb Cave. The Curb, the curb Cave. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going to be covering Batman White Knight today. Mm-hmm. So, um, Caitlin just finished it recently, and uh, she mentioned wanting to do an episode about it, so I thought, why not? get together on the uh, Skype and talk it out. So, um, so what did you guys think of this story? I loved it. Yeah, I did too. I always wanted a backstory of how the world got Joker and I wanted him to be a real person behind all the makeup and the crazy. So this was, this was kind of nice to read about. I enjoyed it. The story was for you. It, yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. I like the fact that they made me believe that Batman was bad, which I've always believed for the longest time. Because they, they he, he, he did kind of go off the deep end, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, and you know, one of my favorite Batman animated series episodes is the one where he's <laughs> on trial and they're trying to convince everyone that the villains wouldn't even be around if Batman wasn't around. Yeah. Which, and you know, this story kind of goes in a little deeper to it, and it's talking mm-hmm. about how they're the government's paying for all his the demolishing cut. of uh, demolishing yeah. of infrastructure and different things. Which, yeah, that, that's true. I mean, Batman does destroy a lot of shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speaking of the animated series, um, <clears throat> this is written and drawn by Sean Murphy, and um, obviously that's his biggest influence into Batman is the animated series. And we actually just finished watching that series a couple mm-hmm. months ago. Yeah. Um, so I just like how he sees Batman and how his universe is very similar to that. It's like a grown up animated series. Mm-hmm. This book is. Um, I didn't know. And uh, if you didn't know, his favorite part about getting to write and draw this is uh, getting to draw all the cars. I was about to say that's probably my favorite. Yeah. 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 Story part is all the Batmobiles coming all the out Batmobiles. And driving down there. Yeah, that's his favorite part. Yeah, that was neat. Riley, um, you've been reading Curse, haven't you? Yes, I I finished that a few days ago. Okay, we'll get to that eventually. Is there we'll anything to similar to that in it's Curse? In that, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I was hoping for some bat suits. Um, as much as I love this book, I actually like the other one a little bit better. Oh, a little bit. So, Ooh, it's hot good. Hot it's tape. good. <laughs> um, well, uh, you guys want to like give it a rating out of ten? What What do you think? Uh, what's the highlights for you in this series? Nine. Okay. Actually, eight point five. I'll tell you why. Okay. Why? Well, no, go ahead. I want to hear y'all scores. <laughs> Um, I'd probably give it between an eight and a nine as well, just because I really did like it, but I also don't think that it tops the Snyder run for me with, um, the Court of Owls. It, it just doesn't, I don't think it topped it for me. So I'd probably put it at an eight and a half, nine tops. Riley? Okay. I'll probably give it a nine. Um, I really like all the Batmobiles. That's really fun. Mm-hmm. And I like the overall vibe of the whole universe that he creates. Mm-hmm. And I also like how we get so much of good Joker in the book. That's, oh yeah, that's a concept that you don't see. So I liked the uh, art too. And the, yeah, yeah, it's the same art. The writer is the artist too, right? Yes. Yeah. And the two Harleys was was um, interesting to me as well. That's yeah, what the two I Harleys didn't like. Thing. You, you didn't, didn't like, like that? that? I did not like that. I, I, I appreciated its existence. Mm-hmm. I liked that one was kind of the Harley Quinn um, <laughs> from the movie, which kind of confused me, you know. Yes. And then I liked that one was the normal Harley from the animated series, but it was very confusing at first because I was like, oh, this Harley just loves Joker. She doesn't actually love the real person Joker. She just likes being crazy. I was like, so you're just addicted to the being crazy part. Mm-hmm. So and he, I didn't like her as a villain. I didn't find her threatening. I didn't, I didn't no. find her. I did. There was no thought in my head that oh, they're not going to be able to stop her. It was all like, oh, okay. Cool. I thought it was pretty. 
yeah, she wasn't threatening and I didn't think that she brought a whole lot to the table. Like she was just trying to bring the Joker back out and it was just like, okay, well, what's the point in this? Cause what do you do after he comes back? Like, what are you, what is the ultimate goal? And I just didn't think that it brought well, a whole lot to the, what I did like about the two Harleys <laughs> was that it explains why they're so different and why that change was made in comics, you know, like, you've got the classic Harley and then you've got the, the new one who doesn't need the Joker. And, um, they're just so different from each other that it makes sense to make them two people. Mm. Um, so I did like the direction he went with it, but, um, you will see the classic Harley a lot in the second one. Um, so she'll be a, a main character in that one. I noticed that in the little one shot we did that you had us read with the Mr. Freeze with yeah. her being at the end. Yeah. This uh, Von Freeze one shot. <laughs> so I want us to talk about that at the end because it does kind of fit in with the second story, but he originally intended it to be in this book somewhere, but it just didn't work out. Um, hmm. So I just thought we could mention it a little bit. And you don't, it doesn't have anything to do with that story. It just like kind of technically takes place in that story. So you don't, you don't need Curse of the White Knight to enjoy this at all. Mm-hmm. But issue one opens up at Arkham Asylum, and I love this scene. This is a really cool scene. And, uh, but yeah. Sean Murphy, he's more known for his art. Um, that's that's what he does most of the time. So um, when I saw that he was doing his own series, I was really excited. And I knew it would look good. Um, but it, it basically opens up with uh, Batman locked up. Which threw me for a total loop. Yeah. I had no idea what to expect going forward when that happened. But it does revisit it. So it starts off with how it kind of ends. So you're at that beginning scene and then you jump back a year and you watch it all progress. So you're not left in the dark for long, but it's still, I guess, unnerving to see the hero locked in chains. And it's a good cold open. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because you're definitely not expecting that if you have no knowledge of the book. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, the first time I read this book, I was actually going on a beach trip, I believe. Mm-hmm. And I read it on the way down to the beach. And I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Me being business-minded, too, and stuff, I really liked the part where he's mentioning how the Wayne... The, the government's having to be paying for the taxes and stuff of all the damage that uh, Batman's done over the years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it, it opens up in the, in the asylum and Batman is like beating the crap out of the Joker. Mm-hmm. And like, they're all like, hey man, you know, he's on these meds. He's okay. And he's like, no, I'm not buying it. And just beating the crap out of him. Yes, that was before he turned though, wasn't it? No, like, he's got all these pills around him, too, that he was supposed to be taking. I think he relapsed. But, yeah, um, I think shortly shortly after that, we find out about the two Arleys, right? Mm. I haven't read this since it came out, so it's still a little fuzzy for me. Oh, me too. (laughs) I mean, you, you... It starts um, off with it's it's him arresting uh, Joker and he shoves the mm-hmm. the pills the down pills, his throat, yeah. basically. Right. And then Joker turns good and he goes and visits Harley so that he can marry her and prove that he is a better man and he's yeah. a good person now. And he wants to show Gotham that he is better and they don't even need Batman. Mm-hmm. That's his way of beating Batman is by being better. So he visits. New Harley, which is the Margot Robbie dressed 
bad Harley, mm. basically. We'll call her bad Harley. Yeah. And he visits her, and she's like, uh, no, you need to snap out of this shit. And, like, yeah. tries to beat him up and stuff. And then old Harley comes and saves him. <laughs> or good Harley. Animated series Harley. Later on, doesn't Joker um, get released? And they start, like, the whole Napier initiative where they, like, well, uh, he, start libraries and stuff like that. He goes on trial. And he spends, I don't know how much time digging and investigating so that he can kind of prove that these people were allowing Batman to kind of create the what they called the super criminals. Um, mm-hmm. So he proves that. And then he goes and he runs for... A, some council seat member um but he's still just as shady he's just he's breaking the rules to kind of show everybody that batman's this terrible person but he's still breaking the rules at the same time um so you kind of see a dichotomy there he's basically proving to batman that he's right that you do actually need to do something about it you can't just yeah for sure. Try to fib your way around the system and act like, oh, you're doing wrong when the reason that you're fixing the system is you're also doing something wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it goes through a lot of back and forth. Like it's like it's like a big ego a battle. All the villains that yeah. get uh, mind controlled by Mad Hatter stuff. Yeah, and they That's all. Cool. Have some of Clayface. I don't know. Um. Yeah, there they are, mind controlled. Yeah. So it looks like here, um, the new Harley is sitting up to. Uh, I didn't like her look either. Like, you didn't? no. I mean, it it makes me think of um. Heath Ledger's Joker, where he like cuts himself, she just looks like she's got this jagged cut up her the side of her face and up to her eye. Like it just it doesn't yeah it doesn't scream super criminal Joker to me. But again, I did like the historical aspect though. We learned a lot about Victor Freeze and his dad and his family. As, lo- as well as Thomas Wayne. And I think that there's a lot of darkness surrounding Batman's parents. And so it was interesting to read about some of their history. Victor Freeze was my favorite part of this. Yeah, yeah he, he played a really good part. He was very, very old. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> very decrepit. I and, also uh, Alfred. Alfred was oh, good. Oh, that was so sad. Speaking of Alfred, yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. At this point, Alfred uh, dies. Mm-hmm. So, spoiler. He <laughs> sacrifices himself to save Bruce. <laughs> so sad. Yeah. Um, I think that's the ultimate. I liked his little note that he left for Bruce, and um, that was good. I liked that Victor Freeze was basically keeping him alive, and that no one knew except for Bruce. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which that is just like Batman to keep a secret from the rest of the Bat family. Yeah. Yeah. I also like the Batman GCPD in this. Mm-hmm. The GTO. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was no, the uh, GTFO. No. <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was that. <laughs> That's a little too on the nose. <laughs> Get the fuck out initiative. Um, they're, uh, they're a big part <laughs> in the second one, too. We'll see more of them. Um, who was... Uh, who was this guy? Was it Duke Thomas? Show no, me. It, I don't think that's his name. It wasn't? Keep going forward. Turn on the next page. You sure it's not Duke Thomas? This guy. Oh, 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 oh. He was the... It's the, not the, Duke Thomas, though, is it? He was the guy who, like, led the little <laughs> charity thing. I can't remember his name. Yeah, he works at the Y. Yeah, but, like, he's he's a char- he's a back character 
outside of this. That's oh, why I, I was trying that. to remember who I've it never was. heard of him. It's, it's probably Duke Thomas then. That's too far back. He doesn't show up before that? No. Really? Yes. <laughs> really? Yeah. Remember, I've won, I'm the one that's read it the most recent. Yes, dear. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> <laughs> But I also feel like this story went in so many different directions because you've got like the storylines with Jack as the reform joker. You've got the storylines with Batman and and his family. Yeah, 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 yeah. and then like like you've got the the storyline with Clayface and his brain. Like I feel like there's so many different roads that are trying to converge into one super highway. Yeah, and then all the villains are mind controlled by Neo Harley. Yeah. It is Duke Thomas, I told you. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> I knew it was him. I, I was right that he didn't show but, up before uh, then, though. Yeah, she's just kind of a weak villain, in all honesty. Yeah. Did, I didn't much, they have I thing? much more like <laughs> the Joker-Batman relationship of trying to prove each other are bad. Yeah. And yeah. that's what this was. It was both of them trying to prove that the other was wrong. I think that's the actuality. Both of them are trying to get to the same, well, at least good Joker are trying to get to the same result. Mm -hmm. That's really the main conflict. The the bad Harley just kind of moves the story forward. Yeah, I think I don't. Sometimes I felt like she took away from it though. Consider her the villain, you know. Yeah, I would have liked more for the villain to still been Joker, but with him dealing with like Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. Of well, turning does, bad, which they do play with that at the end. But does she mm-hmm. even show up again in anything else? Because I feel like she just came in, and like we're never gonna see any character development for her, and so it just felt really pointless. No, to me. she's just for this story. That's yeah, what I'm saying. That's I like I she's know. just there to move the story. Has there always been more than one Harley Quinn. No. no. It's, it, yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. That was the point of her. We've got the multiple Joker thing now, and blah, blah, blah. I like the fact that Joker didn't even notice that there was another Harley Quinn, though. I yeah, appreciate that it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, but... I... You abuse a person for so long, you just forget who they are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the fist probably effed up the face a little, you just forgot. Yeah, you know. <laughs> As you do. Well, you know, the whole Joker gas and craziness, you know, it's it's a wonder he can just wake up and put the same clothes on in the morning, you know. <laughs> oh. Oh, I think God. it was important, too, that we also saw so much of, like, Batman's inner thoughts. Like, he totally wrestles with what to do that's right, but also what to do to protect the two that are with him batgirl and who is it nightwing nightwing yeah um and and also having to grieve for alfred throughout all of this you know well and robin too deal. like when we find out that robin's alive somewhere i feel like that's I yeah, know. I thought that was different. Like that, he always knew he was Bruce Wayne. I appreciated he, that. Yeah, and that the Joker never said reveal. anything. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that about Joker because if you remember in uh, the animated series, after someone finally kills Batman, Batman is all about. I mean, Joker is all about trying to kill the person who killed Batman. And mm-hmm. he also, I think there is one. I swear, there's an episode where he learns his identity, and. Or he's about to learn his identity and he like shoots the guy who's about to take the mask off because he's like, then the game would be ruined. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But they need each other. Like this whole book is about them needing each other and how they're trying to process through that together. Yeah. So. And here's the scene where he beats Batman on that rooftop. Yeah. As, yeah, as Jack, he's not as the Joker. Oh, I forgot about this giant freeze cannon. Well, they freeze the city. That was cool. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was cool. Still say my favorite scene is where they're all driving the Batmobiles, though. Mm-hmm. And you get to see the 50s Batmobile. Mm-hmm. There's the... Was that at the part. end? Yeah. 
Yeah, just a few more pages. Yeah, he doesn't hold back with the Batmobiles. He draws like every single one you can think of. Mm-hmm. But Batman. even after, so even after Joker actually defeats Batman, gets him locked up, which is the first scene from the book, we mm-hmm. get where Neo Harley takes over and is trying to get the Joker to come out, and then Joker has to rely on his enemy, Batman, to come help him. Mm-hmm. The old the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah. I thought it was more like Batman has to rely on him and how like humiliating that really is, you know, for his arch nemesis all these years and he has he needs his help. You yeah. know. I'm trying to find all of them. I, I always when I read this I thought it was more about Batman having to swallow his pride here. You know? I love that Batman was always like no he's a liar he's a crazy maniac still <laughs> and he's still on his foot Which, yeah yeah this is about the thing about i love about batman is like you look at justice league <clears throat> doom or doom or what i don't remember what the comic version of that story is but justice league doom he always has a plan to take down anyone no matter how good they are mm-hmm. so i kind of wish that he just like stood his ground it didn't let be like oh he's still a maniac and stuff like that but i guess it is the joker but he's he still would have a plan. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end here, Batman kind of is talking to um, Harley after the whole conflict is over, and he he says everyone thought, thought that it was Jack who was the White Knight this whole time, but it was really you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you're gonna see that later on in the next story. <laughs> so was she the one who made the medicine? Is that what it yeah, was? Yeah, because of her background. She- she kind of planted those in Joker's vicinity to kind of get the ball rolling. Yeah. Um, got you. And then it it heal it heals him, right? Yeah, that that's what kind of flips the switch for him. Right, yeah. but they still wear off, don't they? Yeah, he has to keep taking them, or yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. kind of uh, Jekyll and, and you, Hyde. You remember those scenes where he's like he's got yeah, one I color each them. eye? That was cool. yeah, I love those scenes. Yeah. I didn't feel like it was fair though because at the end. Batman makes Joker confess to what he did. So Joker goes back to jail to save Harley because he loves her. So she doesn't have any consequences. But, I mean, Batman did some pretty bad stuff too. And nobody put him back in jail. So, like, I didn't feel like it was altogether fair that Joker had to go back and didn't kind of get a fair chance to reform himself. But Batman's still out here wrestling with whatever well, inner person he has. You gotta think for one thing, one reason. Joker's killed like a million people. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Batman's not been so great either. Joker deserves the chair. But he good now. <laughs> <laughs> Joker deserves the chair. That's why I like this story. Because it was like, Batman, kill this mother effer. <laughs> He deserves yeah. to die. On, He's man. going to keep killing so many more people. Kill him. And I don't like the bullshit of, well, they're not like a gun. I, if I if I cross that line, I'll just keep killing people. I'm like, no. You just saved 10,000 people's lives because you killed That's one true. guy. Yeah. <laughs> You're wrong, Tanner. You're wrong. <laughs> he always breaks out. You can't well. trust the system. <laughs> And um, speaking of Mr. Freeze, I know you guys like Mr. Freeze in this book. Uh, mm-hmm. So we can talk about this one shot right quick. Um, Bond Freeze. And yeah. So like I said, this is he meant for this to go in here somewhere, but he just didn't know where to put it. Um, so it's basically just a backstory of Mr. Mm-hmm. Freeze. And you mentioned how old he was. <laughs> well, that's because he went through the Holocaust. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, his father actually was a Nazi scientist. Who did not, says he did not agree with the Nazi regime and their way of life. But right. I, but it's, he, it's he also to didn't want to that. take big risks for people. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so he wasn't like. A Nazi sympathizer, but at the same time, he he wasn't really willing to put himself out there. He still wore the uniform. Much. Um, 
Yeah, and he he did didn't he get funding from the Nazis also? This was mm-hmm. Magneto, but Mister Freeze. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> I thought it of that exactly the entire that. time. I mean, it was really good, but I, every, yeah. the whole time I was like, all right, so you're Magneto now. <laughs> but Magneto was Jewish. Well, so there's that. Freeze's partner was Jewish, but I think. By that... the way, his name was James, right? James Smith was Dean. The... The friend, right? I think so. Oh, oh, I don't remember. Pretty sure his name was James. Jacob. Anyways, Jacob. Jacob. Iconic Smith, Jacob. character. Great guy. I liked him a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always love a good tubby guy with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> and also, he was like the father that you know Victor mm-hmm. never had because his father was so busy, and, and that led to Victor's father to be a Nazi. Pretty, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it it did not stop him in um, any way. But like everything good about Victor really is from <laughs> Jacob. Yep. Everything he learned from him. Um. So was Mister Freeze never a villain in this universe? Well, that's what I was wondering because I the way the make this story sounds, evil. it sounds like that. Not yeah. like the strict sense of the word <laughs> villain. It's well, more like he my was... My question is, because Nora, that's why I'm questioning it, because it sounds like Nora never wound up in the little cryogenic chamber. Nor did they get married, because she's like a baby no, no, when she, he's... No, she did. No, they're but still it... married. But they don't... They don't I mean, they she'd don't... only be like eight years younger than him. They but don't address the whole cryotherapy Nora. thing. Oh, it's, it's a, a different, different Nora? Nora. But it's I like not know that. No, Nora is not like his wife in this... I don't She's think. She's like his adopted daughter. I don't remember who she was. She was Jacob's youngest Well, child. Batman says goodbye to her at the end, which makes me think that this Freeze never went crazy because the whole reason of Mr. Freeze being a villain is he's trying is to save because of life. Nora. Yeah. Right. Which and that, he's already I, got the Freeze gun and stuff, so I just assume. Whenever she yeah. was frozen, I don't think they even had time to even know each other really. Which, I mean, I guess you could be like, well, his whole villainy <laughs> is that his father was a Nazi. Which, I guess, that would have some effects. <laughs> I saw a picture of Nora in here. Yeah, she's briefly. Well, at the end of the Freeze story, she's with Batman and she just says bye. Mm-hmm. Because she works at the lab or whatever. I also like Thomas Wayne. I thought this was a good depiction of Thomas Wayne. Yeah, in the standalone issue? Here's Nora in the... In the uh, White Knight book. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's like a totally different Nora that's in this standalone. Seemingly. Did she ever actually appear in the story like that, though? With Mr. Freeze? Like, in her little tube? In the tube? Not in the standalone. I didn't think so. She's not. I mean, she was on that cover, but I don't think she was ever actually in the story. Nora is this little baby, right? Yeah, Nora's the baby. Okay. She's never. We never see her frozen in her little test tubey thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. In this, um, I but, don't know. Does she ever pop up in your curse? No. To me, know. it felt more like a Professor X and Jean Grey type relationship. You that's know what, what I, mean? I was thinking mm-hmm. too. He could have married her though. I mean, she's only eight years his senior. Senior. Yeah. Mary um, the baby. <laughs> What's also cool about this issue is that it's not drawn by Sean Murphy; it's drawn by Klaus Janson. I did and, not uh, tell a difference. If you know, Maybe he I just don't remember. He um, <laughs> it's it looks a lot different. I I think bit, yeah. I think at the end maybe is why I thought it was the same one. I do I do remember the you can, the you can flashback catch scenes were different. Yeah, but yeah. if you go to the end where it's got Nora and Batman. That was similar art style. I think it's mm-hmm. just because he drew with the bit. style of that Batman. And that's why it made me think it was the same person. Um, yeah, she really... Go back to, to Nora's picture. I don't know. The whole time I was reading the standalone, Nora kind of made me think of the the new Harley. Or the, 
the good Harley. The I good guess. Harley with the yeah, glasses. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those that. look like her. Yeah. Um, I know. I thought that that was kind of a an interesting blonde with glasses. Yeah, <laughs> but what, like same sh- hair shape and everything. What ties it back in is how they tell how um he helped deliver Bruce into the mm-hmm. world. So that was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, how he was good friends with the Waynes. I like how they made Thomas Wayne not a bad guy. <clears throat> Because here recently, I don't know if this is just the hip, young, cool thing to do of making Thomas Wayne a jackass, but yeah, I liked him being good, nice guy, Thomas Wayne, and how you can see kind of what Bruce would be like if he wasn't mm-hmm. dealt with that tragedy right. and stuff. Because yeah. I, that's mm-hmm. what I like. I would like to see Thomas Wayne be the version of Bruce that just didn't experience tragedy. So he's rich. He's doing the right thing. He's doing these foundations yeah, yeah. but he's not fighting crime it's, well I when like, you yeah. think about I don't it like crime boss i'm an asshole i'm gonna yeah, up yeah. little special kids in the joker movie mm-hmm. <laughs> when you think about it batman like he his whole reason for being is to avenge his parents and to make sure that doesn't happen to anyone else but <clears throat> at the same time he was raised by his parents for eight years mm-hmm. and yeah. he wouldn't have even thought to really do that beyond catching that killer unless he had already been instilled in him that sense of good and helping mm-hmm. others. Yeah. So it makes sense for a good Thomas Wayne more than anything. That's true. It doesn't make sense to have a bad one. But you got to remember, Riley, if you say her name, you will instantly stop fighting her. So obviously <laughs> if mom had a better hey, influence. Why did you say that name? Gosh, this is... We're in the rabbit hole now. Um. <laughs> but I also really like that you see that he's tied to another person. Like, we always kind of see that the Joker and Batman are kind of eternally tied together. Like, they're mortal enemies and they're, they've got this thing. But then to see that, like, Victor Freeze helped deliver... Cars are on our end. Bruce into this world. Like... It, for me personally, thinking of everything I know about Dr. Freeze, like, he's he's never been that kind of person. And I think to, yeah. to see him have that, aside from Nora and trying they, to save her, he's got that. Ties, yeah, know, he's so. got that humanistic thing. He's not just this literally cold person. He's yeah. He's brought something good into the world. He's... You know, I love the cold. <laughs> <laughs> the ice age. <laughs> but I think that that was that was really neat to me to see that Batman has ties to other people other than just the Joker. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um. I should breath over there, Tanner. Yeah. <laughs> well, why Tanner gets a breath here? Um. I was thinking of Mr. Freeze. <laughs> Just the thought of Mr. Freeze is really funny. This is good content. <laughs> I was thinking of him. So there's a, uh, you know, Alfred's dying on the thing. <laughs> and then he's got like the Arnold Mr. Freeze. It's not a tumor. Saw him up and get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um... <laughs> But what I thought was cool about this issue in particular, I don't know if you guys read the uh, the back page where it, where no, Sean sorry. Murphy's like talking about what this is. I started to, um, but I didn't finish it. But he, Klaus Jansen, if you didn't know, he he's known for working on the Dark Knight Returns with Frank Miller. Um, so he's he's a big deal in comics. Um, but Sean Murphy talks about how like you know that that was like my guy that was one of my idols you know and um all of a sudden he finds himself being able to work with this guy who he's looked up to who he's kind of modeled himself after his he's Mm -hmm. said himself that his art style kind of imitates klaus a little bit um so it talks about how they were together um and they they met for the first time and they got together over uh, breakfast and um, <clears throat> before they knew it, they they found out they had a lot of common, um, and they were talking about like mm-hmm. how Klaus, his family, actually fled Germany during the war. So um, he kind of 
has a little bit of guilt about you know being being German, you know. Yeah. Um, and tied he had to that stuff. a lot of stuff. guilt for it. Yeah. I so like, I like that. I like that a lot in the story. Mm-hmm. I like um, Freeze's father too. He kind of had yeah. a great arc of being an asshole. Yeah. But, but also like, like making a freeze gun, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And uh, he he asked Klaus, you know, like, have you ever drawn a Nazi story? Because, you know, he thought he probably had, you know, a lot of people have drawn that kind of story. Um, well, but, it's more offensive, asking a German guy yeah. to draw some <laughs> well, Nazi I mean, yeah. sides. Or... Especially when he says, I have guilt over being a well, German. Well, think about like... it, though. There's, there's, there's Nazi people in the Dark Knight Returns. That's true. So, I don't know. But, uh, well, had he? No, he, he said no, that he hadn't. So he was like, oh, okay, well, let's, <laughs> let's do, do this. <laughs> you know, yeah, let's do it. Um, it was a yeah. good story, though. It, it needed was. to be told. I like I like the yeah. humanizing of villains. So. Yeah. And as long as we get more of these black label stuff where it's that's basically what they're doing, Harleen was probably my favorite story I've read this Harleen year. Harleen was really good. Harleen was great. Caitlin, you need to read that if you haven't read it yet. It's yeah, it's on my you list, should. yeah. You got Sexy Joker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> but the the art in that is is really superb. It it's is. really good art. He's got like an eight pack. Good grief! Because <laughs> that's what we want to read it for. Hey, there's a sex scene in there too. Hot. Oh my god. I mean, there's multiple in White Knight too. So <laughs> you know. Well, I just remember the one, but okay. But whatever. Arlene's was better. Okay. Okay, Tanner. I'll be sure H-A-W-T. to get it right on. H-A-W-T. Halt. Halt. <laughs> but do you guys have any uh, final thoughts on the overall story? or? What? Yeah, I, basically just hitting home when I say it at the start is I think it was a really good Batman story. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, probably one of my favorites. It's just, um, for me, I think the villain was a little problematic. I didn't really care much for Neo Harley. But that's the only that's the only gripe I have about the story. Yeah, I love the Batman relationship. I love the humanizing of villains, and that mm-hmm. story hit home with that really good. I yeah. hope he does. I'm ready to read Curse of White Knight. I know you finished it, Riley, but I want to yeah get into it next. I think you're gonna enjoy it a lot. I hope so. Um, what do you have like any questions for me about that story? Like, like do you have any no, guesses of what it's gonna be? I want yeah, to I want to blind. as well. I don't know though. I kind of. And I don't know anything about the the next one, but there's a part of me that kind of wishes we could have a run with good Joker, just like instead of just one book, like actually have a. I, I just I really like the head, concept. Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Mr. I, Rogers Joker. <laughs> I I can I mean that's kind of the direction that it goes, but like because for so long I really wanted I wanted somebody behind the Joker mask. I just, for me, this book, this one book is not enough. Like, I want to know more about Joker as a, a person. Um, so that would be, that would be cool. But I'm excited to read the next one, too. So. Well, he we'll is see. in the next one, so. Well, as that's Jack or as Joker. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's get another face of the Joker. Like, a completely different one. Like, like not good. Car not salesman? Good. I don't know. <laughs> like, not, not good. <laughs> but not bad, like an in-the-middle Joker. Like a passive-aggressive Joker. (laughs) Like, nice guy would bring you a drink if you asked him, but he'd also shake your hand with a buzzer in it. (laughs) Classic. (laughs) All this time, I thought I didn't exist, but I do now. (laughs) I wanted, like, the Mick Foley, like, three faces of Foley, but, like, three faces of Joker. (laughs) Well, I mean, we are getting the three Jokers sometimes. I'm reading that. I'm curious on that one. It's delayed in that for a Well, yeah. Like everything mm-hmm. else. Well, unfortunately. Uh, I think Jeff Johns pushed it back. He didn't want to, like, put one out and then not, not know if, when the others are coming out because of Doomsday Clock. Um, but mm-hmm. now the whole thing's delayed. Yeah. So. Yay! They've been teasing that since yeah, five gosh. years ago. Mm. <sighs> Dang, man. Hey, good things take time, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> lots and lots, lots of, of time. time. <laughs> um, 
But yeah. yeah, I remember us talking about that like in okay. one of our friends' basement. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that? Did you say five years ago? Yeah. Was uh, that pre Caitlin? Um. Yeah. Yes. This. Uh, we're is. on four, four and a half. <laughs> it is. Time flies and you're having fun. Time has flown. <laughs> Three jokers. Yeah, that's crazy. Riley, what were your last thoughts? Um, I love what this story is and what it means going forward. Um, that it leads to Curse of the White Knight, which I really love a lot. And um, I just love how, like I said before, this this is like the grown-up animated series. Mm-hmm. So if you love that, definitely check this out because yeah. it's it's like a fleshing out of that universe. There's so much nostalgia, so much little Easter eggs and stuff like that that I really love in this story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. But that's all we got today. We hope you guys enjoyed and uh, hope that you will check out this book.